Sure, sure. Sure, 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 sure. Sure. Forgetting to take your shoes off, sticking your chopsticks straight in your rice, or just falling asleep on the floor of Sentagai Shibuya. We've all heard of the common mistakes that newbies to Japan make. In this video, we're going to handle some of the more lesser known faux pas. If we've missed any, please let us know in the comments. And what kind of mistakes did you make when you came to Japan? Bowing in Japan. There's ways to do it and there's ways not to do it. So perhaps the most common mistake is what I call the Thailand bow. That's where you're doing a sort of praying gesture and bowing your head, which is quite common in many parts of Asia like Thailand. But in Japan, that's not how people bow. Other instances of incorrect bowing would maybe be overdoing it. Maybe you might do the full to the floor apology bow. Have you had to do that recently, Chris? I, I never apologize. No, no regrets. It was always me versus me. It was never me versus you. Well, the way to bow in Japan, especially as a tourist, is just a simple nod is fine. Or just don't bow at all, like our friend Chris here. <laughs> What's our uh, next mistake, Alex? Well, it's thinking that Mount Fuji is in Tokyo. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen a lot of photos with Fuji towering over Tokyo Tower, which just isn't true. Where is Mount Fuji, Chris? Well, it's not in Tokyo. <laughs> That's, what? That's the first thing to know. It's about two hours on the train from Tokyo. To be fair, you can see Mount Fuji in the distance on a good day. You do get some nice photo opportunities, but it's in Yamanashi and that's nowhere near Tokyo. Find out more about Fuji in all our other videos. We love Fuji here. So our next mistake, Alex, is spending too much money on sushi. Is that a mistake, Chris? Yes. If you know what you like, if you've got a decade experience of tasting different fish in season out of season, then sure, knock yourself out. But if it's your first time to Japan, you probably haven't had good sushi yet. Have you really developed your palate? Have you, could you really tell the nuances? Could you, would you know what to order? So I think don't spend too much on sushi. It's Japan, it's all good. I disagree. I think that if you have a really nice sushi restaurant, you have that man, he's behind the counter, he's got a handful of sushi, he's making it, he's putting it together. So it's all about the, the man's hand. Not just about the man's hand. <laughs> it's about the experience, not just the sushi. That's what I'm saying. I suppose. Maybe you have opinions in the, in the comments on whether one should spend lots of money, a little money, cheap as possible. Our next mistake is tipping. Tipping is quite common in America and other countries, but in Japan, it's really not done at all. People will be running after you even yeah. if you leave one yen. I did that once actually. I didn't want like the five yen change and I just left it in the tray and walked off. And <laughs> they chased me down the road to give me like five yen back. While there isn't tipping necessarily in Japan, there is something else. There's otoshi which uh, I suppose you could say is like the cover charge. When you're in an izakaya, they'll give you like a little dish, small little nibble or something. And that's usually 300 to 500 yen on the bill per person. It's probably not a good idea to try and refuse it. And Definitely it's usually, don't quite, refuse. <laughs> it's usually quite nice. Like I often quite like the otoshi and it's easier to think of it as a tip rather than a cover charge. For more information on what you should and shouldn't do in an izakaya, check out our izakaya guide. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. For traveling or work in Japan, mobile is the go-to SIM card. Sure, 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 sure. Whether you're a tourist wanting unlimited data or you need a real Japanese phone number, mobile has you covered, no matter what device you're using. Sure, 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 sure. Sure, if you have any issues, you can use their native English-speaking customer service. What's more, mobile guarantee that the majority of their profits go straight to charity. Sure. Okay, mum. Okay, bye, mum. Bye. Bye. So another mistake people make coming to Tokyo is trying to drag all of their luggage around the city or in particular trying to get on rush hour trains. That's a big no-no. Carriages stuffed full of people. It's just not going to work trying to bring your luggage on a rush hour train. So um, what should people be doing instead, Alex? 
Well, Tokyo is very, very good for having luggage storage facilities and sending luggage, service desk, lockers. It's very unique in that you can keep your luggage in some places for up to 30 days. We've even got a video about it. Yeah, I think I recognize you from that. I might well be in our luggage storage videos, so uh, check out the, uh, the link for more information. One potentially costly mistake that people make is not getting good value out of the JR parts. Now with the price increase, you actually have to travel a long way before it will actually save you money. So if you're thinking of just going Tokyo, Kyoto and back, you don't buy the JR parts, you'll just buy tickets. Another mistake people make is the day they start using it, they're just traveling in Tokyo. It won't save you any money, really. You save money when you get on the Shinkansen and you go a long way. So you arrive in Japan, go from Narita to Tokyo, just use normal tickets. Then the day that you go off to Hiroshima or wherever, that's when you start the JR Pass. Another mistake people make coming to Japan is joining an already long queue. In Japan, queuing is like a national sport. People love the safety in numbers of being in the queue. And it's not always because the place is good, it's just because it's a queue. So sure, maybe you want to queue for the best karaoke place in all of Tokyo, but you could also go to the place with no queue at all for the second best karaoke in all of Tokyo, and it will still be really, really good. That brings us on to the next mistake, which is things that you kind of should be queuing for, top things to see in Tokyo. And the thing is to evade the queue, you should book ahead. There's top attractions like Shibuya Sky, the Pokemon Cafe, where you have to book way in advance. The next mistake is about wearing kimonos. Now it's lovely to put on a kimono, go somewhere in Kyoto, go to Sensoji Temple in Tokyo, but there are certain ways you shouldn't wear a kimono that they only wear when dressing the dead. So the best thing to do would be to use a service, a rental service for your kimono and they'll dress you correctly. Next mistake making a disturbance really and not being respectful. These are like general things about Japan if you're visiting that might not be true in other countries such as talking on the phone, on the train, making a mess, being very very loud. Just generally uh, in Japan people are very polite and considerate of everyone around them so just turn your radar up a bit more as to like how are people around you behaving? Like you've kind of spilling crumbs everywhere, you know, scoffing your pasty on the train to the horror of everybody around you. Another thing to realize there's not actually many bins, trash cans in Tokyo, so you often have to kind of take rubbish with you. Basically, Japan has lots of intricate rules of society and you're not expected to know them all, but just be a bit more aware of what's going on around you and just try and be more be a bit more polite, basically. We've all made mistakes, I've made a few. The key thing is just don't sweat it, just relax. Tell us about your mistakes. What mistakes have you made in Japan? Give us some uh, stories in the comments. All right, have fun in Japan, bye.